Okay, uh, as you've noted, we were asked to bring case studies. You're going to hear a lot of case studies during this time. The object was to show from all experiences, from customers, from individuals, etc., different sizes, levels, and varieties of organizations. So not all case studies will apply to all of you. Not all subjects will be perfect. But I do hope that over the space of the two days, you're going to come away with pieces where you go, yeah, that was really for me. It was very good. So again, I'm going to ask one more time. Um, sound is good, not too tinny in the back. OK, we're good. A couple of things. Um, Roger Mosbach. I'm going to talk about community today. I'm going to talk about how we built the SEO Moz community from in its inception, nobody following, except maybe your mom, except not my mom following. I was mom. Um, to being the world's largest provider of search marketing software. It's an esoteric field. We are working certainly B2B, and we're working with a number of technologists. Our advantage, of course, is that they were bleeding edge technologists because they're SEOs. Uh, first question, how many Mazers do I have in the room? Do you know what a Mazer is? You are one. Thank you. And pro Mazers? Okay, pro Mazers, come see me afterwards. I've got toys for pro Mazers, um, and, and I appreciate it, and Mazers as well. Uh, everybody's going to get a little Roger Mazbot here. It's a mascot of the SEO Maz Corporation. We created this little guy as part of our explanation, saying we don't scrape our data. We actually do have a crawl of the World Wide Web. And this is our little bot. This is Roger. And he runs around and crawls the web. So again, we have fun with that. The second thing you're going to get are uh, toys today. I brought chocolates. And I brought a gift from Roger Mazbot. So this is social. We're going to get engaged. Let's see how it works. I want to talk about community development rather than just social media. We've been talking a lot today about tactical advice and about the concept of strategy. Some of the speakers have said social media is in itself, or social marketing is in itself, not a strategy. I would have to agree. A strategy would encompass all of the marketing options that you have and exactly how you're going to build your company as well. Community development is really about building brand communities communities around a particular brand. It could be a product brand, it could be a whole company. So some of you may know this guy from Admin and so on. I had to actually live through that stage. It was pretty grim. That stuff is officially over. We're not surprised, of course, we're search marketers here. This concept of interruption marketing is also done. Right? I mean, here, the Bose Corporation actually interrupted my sky. How insulting was that? But if you think about it, that happens a lot. We're beyond that. So from raving fans, the conversation marketing, to friends of fans marketing, we have moved on and seen a great crack in the world of marketing. Let's see if this works. Oh, not so much. I'm kind of tethered here. OK, so much for that, right? Social media does not change the story of either a brand a company, or an organization. It merely speeds and increases the speed of the message that you're sending. It increases the breadth of delivery and how far you can get that message. Okay. We talk a lot about the tactics. And I don't say that the conversation is mired in tactics, but it is usually focused on tactical stuff. We choose our platforms. We target our markets. We, you know, the likes of the new links, you know, all that kind of stuff. Depth plus breadth of engagement is where we're going to find our ROI. These are important conversations, okay? and we will hear a lot about it. But I'd like to begin a little further back than that. I'd like to begin about with really the strategy of corporate development that makes brand communities. So what is this truth about social media that will out? The truth is the nature of a company or a brand. Okay? That's what we're spreading. Now, the nature of a company can sometimes be found in things like this, uh, guiding principles and so on. A lot of banks will do that. They'll print it up little seven or eight, ten baby bullets on a little car, and you're supposed to carry it in your pocket, and then they'll write you up if you're not carrying it. You know, nonsense. And whether it's codified or not, the nature of your brand, whether it's written in tenets or not, it will always be found in your processes. So here's the story of SEO Moz and how we built the brand 
and what those processes look like. Hopefully it doesn't sound too salesy, it's just about building a company, not about the product itself. We call it inbound marketing. So, in 1981, I opened a small company. I was a little young, my hair was shorter, and was a whole lot skinnier. It was also a cartoon. But over the years, I raised three children under my desk. The youngest will tell you the color of the blanket he slept on under my desk. So we're talking about literally. Okay. While we were doing that, I taught my children that if you share, you will get more. Okay. So at this point, somebody's got chocolate. Who's got the chocolates? Somebody? Where's my chocolate lady? She just ran away with it. She just ran away with the chocolate. She did not share. She will get no more. Okay? I can't believe it. <laughs> so the object is, go get a dozen people and hand out two pieces of chocolate each. <laughs> just any dozen people. There you go. We're going to have some fun here. Don't worry, everybody gets it sooner or later, okay? You all get chocolate. <laughs> we are sharing. It's an interesting concept. The difference between this and what any other mom might say is I built a company based on that concept. Dang, if it didn't work. You can't imagine the flack I got for it. Some years later, this concept was taught by a uh, very great B movie. It was called Pay It Forward. Some of you may know that as well. Okay. So in 1993, I became involved with Marketland International. It was the first international commerce center on the World Wide Web. We were so full of each other. That web was about six weeks old. We scanned business cards in full color, and we got popped them right there on that fresh new web. Boy, was that fun. I spent some money. I didn't make any money. But tell you what, by the time we were done, we had real-time communication for international traders across different countries, cultures, and languages. We had real-time folks you know, doing the translating. There wasn't any battle fish or whatever it was at that time. But we could see the image of the face on the other side. I could hear the timbre of the voice. It was incredible. Right? If I say good morning or I say good morning, I said two entirely different things. And it was critical for these guys to negotiate their deals and understand what was going on. And I was smitten. We do not kill those with whom we trade. And then I found my kids playing Sonic the Hedgehog with kids in San Diego, in Copenhagen, and in Mandalore. And I thought, hmm, we don't kill those with whom we play. It's going to be a whole lot harder to put a gun in that young man's hand at the age of 19 and say, go kill. He's going to say, are you crazy? We play game together on Saturday night. So I tell you that until the Klingons show up, we're not going to figure out that we are one human society. We will only see each other's differences. And the Klingons are probably not showing up next week, regardless of whatever the trend is saying. Right? But this was our next best hope. So it continues to get me up every day. In 1999, Rand joined the company. Does anybody know Rand Fishkin? OK, a whole bunch of you do, a whole bunch of you don't. Rand Fishkin may be arguably the most famous name in search marketing today, SEO. It's a really small pond, so he's a really big fish in a tiny, tiny little pond. Okay? But uh, he is my eldest son, so I am literally and figuratively SEO mom. He joined the company in 1999, and he was already searching for this idea that would be part of this new world economy. Okay. So I was a pretty proud mom here. Yeah, it is personal. The first takeaway on this brand development is it is completely and utterly personal. How many of you are building your own companies? Okay. This part's for you guys. There will be other parts for other guys and talk, but this part's for you, right? In 1999, Rand wrote his first online biography for the website, but it was not called at that time SEO Moss. It was just my old company. He said, the future of the internet is as unimaginable today as the future of flight was a century ago. We have the opportunity to populate this universe unfettered by the laws of math and physics. I take that opportunity as an obligation. I didn't write that. I cried when he wrote it. One did that, two of them. I take that opportunity as an obligation. It gives you a sense of how we were going to build this company together. That time, we didn't know what company was going to happen. 
Right? At that time, we were building websites. It was kind of, buddy, want to buy a website? Buddy, want to buy a better one? We've got Flash now. Isn't that cool? Right? And then 2001 hit, and nobody wanted to buy a website for a lot of money. Right? So I went out to make the rainfall. That was my job. Right? Go out and get more business. And I heard the same things again and again. It said, basically, we don't have any capital expenditure. We'll see you when this is over. Except for a few who said, well, I don't have capital expenditure, but I do have operating capital. You bring me a buck, I'll give you a corner off the dollar. OK, no sweat. I know what that is. You guys know what that is, right? That's commission sales online. I didn't even have the words affiliate marketing to wrap around it. I didn't know that stuff. It's not what I did for a living. But I learned pretty damn quickly. So we designed, developed, authored, marketed, deployed, managed, you know, everything, for nothing, a number of websites. If we made a buck, we took a corner off the dollar. And that meant that the sites had to be found online, even by that gal. So I farmed it out with money I didn't have, because I spent all of it trying to build up these websites and so on. We were going pretty deeply into debt at this point. I spent money we didn't have again for four different companies who couldn't do SEO back in 2001 and 2002. And finally, Brad came over and said, well, I guess I've got to learn this. I said, yeah, because I can't do it. I can't do all of it. I was busy holding the place together with shoestring and bubble gum and walking the streets. And I mean, months, I couldn't pick my head up off the streets. We went tremendously into debt which was absolute insanity for a middle-aged mom with three kids under her belt who had had perfect credit school all her life and never took those kinds of risks. So that was an extraordinary risk. I would see a penny on the ground and I'd say, okay, that represents a thousand dollars. We're going to make rent. We're going to make payroll. When your mind's playing games with you like that, you're in deep trouble. It was interesting. He came over and he said, I guess I better learn it. And he did. And he got really good at it. He got ninja good at it. Until a couple of years later, somebody wrote an advertisement in New York City for one of the fields that we've been working in. It was a company that sold, well, it was hard money commercial bridge lending. Okay? It, it's an esoteric field of business lending. If somebody wanted to renovate a hotel like this, they would go out to this secondary lending market. They would get this small bridge loan, one to 12 months, maybe 26, uh, four months or so on. And then they would go and get a regular mortgage once it was all completed. It was that kind of lending. Okay? And it said, anyone who wants to go head to head against at Grand Fish, which was his name on the web at the time, for the term hard money, apply here. I thought, well, gosh, looks like he really learned his stuff. So um, we climbed out of the dip. Oh, wait, wait, the dip. There we go. That's the dip, right? It means something completely different. So we climbed out of the dip. And we finally started to see some results. <coughs> At this point, we're basically doing rev share work, right? Affiliate marketing wasn't so interesting. You build a website, you send somebody else the business, they send you a few bucks. Not so interesting. But rev share, that was much more interesting, in which you designed and developed the entire site. You took the sale, and you paid them a piece of it. So in 2002, Rand started to blog. He wrote this thing called seomoz.org. So SEO, that's easy, search engine optimization. Moz was a bow to DMoz or Mozilla, user-generated, freely shared, open source, right? DMoz and Mozilla, remember that? Okay. And .org, we were never going to make any money here. This is the conversation we're having off to the side with a community of these brand new search marketers while we were serving our customers in the other end. He blogged every day in 2002, 365 days, and in 2003, and in 2004. I cannot overstate or overemphasize the personal tenacity and fortitude it takes to blog every single day for more than a thousand nights. Anybody here blog? Do you blog every day? Keep your hands up. Right. There isn't one in the audience that said they blog every single day without fail. I will tell you that touch the week from the chat, that's how you know your CEO. Okay. Extraordinary will to survive and to compete and to win and to grow this thing. And at that point, it was not even a company. 
It was simply that he would share every single day. Okay? He opened the um, blog to comment, and that created engagement in the community. And then we began to finally see some kind of results. Until now, he'd just been paying it for. <laughs> so, in 2005, Danny Sullivan, kind of known as the godfather of search, uh, he blogged about it way back in 97, 98, just as the search engines came alive. He invited Grant to go speak, or no, to attend, not even to speak, but to attend SES, Search Engine Strategies, in New York City. We couldn't afford it. And Grant told him so. He was pretty straightforward. So there was that transparency and honesty, right? Danny said he'd give him a free ticket if he could get himself over there. So there goes that credit card again. With money we didn't have, we bought a ticket and we managed to get there. And along the way, he said, well, how are people going to know me when I get there? I have this large community of folks who want to meet me at SES. But in those days, we didn't even have avatars inside the blog at our place or in anybody else's place, really. None of those uh, forums had little avatars yet, you know, with, with photos and so on. He thought about wearing his red sweater or whatever, and he noodled about it a little bit, and he went home, and he, you know, figured it out. OK, I'm going to ask, how many people share their chocolate? All right. You passed it on. Way cool. Give me a favor and grab some more. I'm going to start spreading it around. Just grab one, two, the bag, keep sending it around, make sure everybody's got one, OK? There's lots of them there. I'm not taking them home. OK. Yes, sir. Was Rand just blogging about business topics or also like personal life? No, he was only blogging at SEO laws about the subject of SEO. The things he was learning, the things he was trying, the, um, uh, the algorithms that he'd been looking into. Uh, each of the search engines had published a piece, uh, snippets of their algorithm in order to get patents. Those things were available online and he started digging into them and um, blogging about what he was seeing and the deep mathematics of that stuff. As a matter of fact, it was my father-in-law, his grandfather, his father's father, right, who helped him to do that kind of work. To this day, my father-in-law will throw his hands up and say, I have no idea what the application was or is, but I was happy to explain the mathematics. Um, so he was fortunate that he had an asset, somebody to help with it. He only blogged about that kind of thing, uh, empirical evidence, his testing, and studies. So anyway, he went home trying to think about what he was going to wear when he got to that conference. And his girlfriend, now his wife, who was known as Mystery Guest on the blog, her name is Geraldine, by the way, um, and a brilliant woman, uh, she said, wear your yellow shoes, wear your yellow pumas with your suit. He came in and he said, told me that in the morning. It was about, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, that's friggin' genius. And he goes, no, nah, it's just, just something that, I said, no, 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 no. When the book is written, Rand, they will write a book saying, The Wizard of Bonds, The Story of the Yellow Shoes. He said, oh, come on. I said, this is how it's going to work. You're going to walk into that conference room, and instead of people saying, have you seen that guy Rand Fishkin, or have you seen that guy from Seattle, or have you seen at Rand Fish, or whatever it is, they're going to say, have you seen the man in the yellow shoes? <coughs> And it will take less than 10 minutes before they go buzzing around. Instead of saying, have you seen the man in the yellow shoes, they will say, have you seen the yellow shoes? And sure enough, it happened. To this day, he will wear yellow shoes on the stage. There's his grandfather. Right? He joined him in New York and helped answer some of those mathematical questions. So now that pay it forward is beginning to pay back. He's got a ticket to go to a pretty major event where he can now network with people who are already established in the industry. He had an asset personally that guy was willing to show up for him. In November of 2005, a friend of his knew somebody who was writing an article and wrote articles for magazines like this. He was interviewing a fellow who was a black hat, and he asked, who shall we interview that does this stuff that we know as white hat SEO? And the man says, I know the guy who essentially coined the word. I know the quintessential white hat. You should go talk to Rand Fishman. And so again, it begins to pay back. When that happened, it was December of 2005 that this thing came out. I must have asked 100 people what was going to happen once that thing was published. And I couldn't get straight answers. 
And at that point, I decided if I ever climbed out of this dip, out of this hole, right, that I would give back to the next generation of folks building their own companies. And I would run around giving answers to what happens. So later, anybody who's interested, ask me what happens when that goes on, and I will tell you exactly how the thing you know, rolls the cycle. So 2006, Rand published our income, our financial numbers, on the SEO Month blog. Want to talk about transparency? Never mind courage. People were absolutely appalled, never mind surprised, at how little SEO Moz was worth and how much we had taken a hit. In 2007, the brand of Rand Fishkin began to grow significantly. He had been to the conferences now. He was now speaking at conferences. More and more people understood the blog. And the more transparent he was, the more people were reading that sort of thing. It wasn't just Rand anymore. Now and then I would put one on. Mostly the staff was putting stuff on, and some of his colleagues in search were willing to contribute as well. SEO Moz also increased its brand simply because more and more people were becoming part of that organization. Reputation is pretty sticky. In 2011, well, 2009, we went out and uh, thought about raising some money, and we failed. And so we blogged about it. And in 2011, we were approached again for making investments. And we actually got so far as to sign a um, term of agreement, basically, giving them 45 days to do their due diligence. It was all over but the shouting. You know, we had nothing to hide and everything was there. But they got cold feet. And they decided not to. So was this the most transparent fundraising start of history was the name of that article? And someone that talks about Rand's article again that tells you we blew it again. I should say there is a price to pay when you do that sort of thing. So remember that one. We're going to come back to it. Brand increased the social reach through, you know, the usual subject and so on. Now I told you that story. So I can tell you the story. Does everybody have chocolate and stickers? Okay, you got it. So we got food and fun. Let's go see what happens. Okay. So the SEO Moz basic stats, right? Without placing a single paid ad from 2007 right, to 2011, that's what it looks like. I should point out, right about the end of 2010, we actually put out a few PPC ads. And sometimes you see some remarketing ads. I don't know how many of you have been hit by the remarketing ads. Okay. So how'd you do that? Well, we did it using all of these pieces of what we call inbound marketing, or these, if you will, free traffic sources. A lot of times, people have been talking here today about this free traffic and you know, how much we spend, nothing. It's not really free. You do hire a marketing agency. You do have pay for people in your staff to manage this sort of thing. You guys in the brand, the in-house marketers, you know this. You are those paid people. So it isn't quite free, but you get the idea. Okay? You get these slides so you don't have to take photos and all that kind of thing. It starts with content marketing. That's why that we still update every single day. Okay. Viral targeted marketing. Okay. These are um, infographics. Infographics are not a flash in the pan. They're a tactic, and this is a tactical takeaway for you, whether you're in-house or not. Okay. Infographics is a way that we learn, and we learn much better than any other way we can get a hold of information. Right? And we had plenty of time, and there was a reasonably small amount of information to get it from words alone. Infographics is a way to give us information faster and more efficiently than ever before. Right? Therefore, it's not going away, because the volume of information that we are required to do our work increases over time. And that's regardless of whatever industry you're in. So viral targeted marketing is also important. In our case, it was the world of search marketers that we were after. So we put up things like stats about search marketers. Here's an interesting industry survey, but there it is, quantified infographics. It was the infographic that everybody wanted to read. Graphics and illustrations can take all different forms. Humor is genius. So let's see if I have that little clicker. I'm not sure. Yes, I do. Look at that. Okay. So pieces of it. So here, for example, Right. I don't know how many of you may have seen this baby before. It was part of a TV commercial about financial investments and the kids talking in a uh, 
kind of grown up voice, if you will, to other babies about how easy it is to invest. And, uh, and the object is, you know, it's that simple that even a baby can do it. But graphics like um, these, these triangles and so on, simply color coded again, give information very quickly and easily, inserting those into your blog posts, inserting them into your advertising material and so on, makes a huge difference. A weekly video series. We run a video every week at SEO Buzz on the blog. It's called Whiteboard Fridays. Anybody seen Whiteboard Friday? A bunch of you. Just want you to know that 25% of all the traffic on our blog comes from video. Did you catch that one? Okay. That was huge. 25% of the 50,000 visits and over that we get on a monthly basis on our blog go to them. Cool. Video guys, go for it. So you build it and then they'll come, right? Mm, not quite. You do have to build it and then you have to market it. These are the money slides. This is what I did. Okay, comments and market and, and uh, you know and conversations and so on. Comment marketing is genius. Okay. You go into somebody else's blog that has authority already. You want to build your own reputation, so you go over the guys who already have a reputation, and you comment on their blog posts. Don't tell me thumbs up, thumbs down, it's cool, you're dumb. No, forget that. Okay? Comment deeply about it. Write your own blog post that expands on your idea about the other guy's post, and tell them that you can go over and see that. This will bring eyeballs from that guy to you. It will also bring that guy over to you. Once you've posted, you send that guy a note saying, we'd be delighted if you take a look and perhaps comment on whatever goes on here. Now you've got a luminary commenting on your own blog. We track everything. Building great content is just the start. That which is measured can be improved. Edwards Deming, 1955. And ever since, that which is measured can be improved continues to say, you know, really work. And by the way, I think the first one who said it was Lord Kelvin. And he said, I make Kelvin come out. Okay. So we use Export Leak for this report. Uh, there's also Facebook reporting and Twitter activity. Uh, social metrics are available on the SEO Moz platform as well. And we incorporate Google Analytics into the SEO Moz Pro platform too. The purpose is track everything. You can't improve it if you don't know where the heck you're standing. Social news and bookmarking, extraordinary value there. For social bookmarking, we find that Y Combinator, Delicious, and Stumble Upon, oh, and Reddit have historically performed best for us. You may find other places where you can get that social bookmarking, and you can see that the referring traffic is not slight. Q&A sites and forums, I spend way too much time on places like this. But it's a great place to establish a personal brand. Do I have any personal consultants in here? Anybody trying to build their own consultancy? Just a few. For those of you, this is a great place to be. Establish your authority by the fact that you can write deeply about what you know in your industry. Right? Others understand that you are the premier authority in it. Those of you who are working in-house, however, can do exactly the same thing and add the company that you're working for. And when the news looks for who knows what they're talking about, they'll be calling you, which is exactly what you want them to do. Conferences and events. My circle has a whole lot more blue in it than this one. Excuse me, a, a whole lot more red and green in it, rather, than the blue in it, right? This is the days in the office that Rand spends, and uh, for some reason I ended up with the wrong slide. I apologize. But mine has a whole lot more red and a whole lot more days and trends as those greens as well. The SEO must, excuse me, the SEO pyramid. These things aren't going away. We've been talking an awful lot about social media today. Social metrics are the next phase of metrics and signals that we're watching. It's appropriate. Okay? The original signals, links, were a crappy signal. They always were, especially 10 years ago. When they started, you'll forgive me, but unless your name is Rand Fishkin, your mama don't link. She doesn't link today, and she didn't link a decade ago. And a decade ago, even fewer linked. Never mind moms. Almost nobody knew how to link. Today, most people don't know how to link. So the whole thing was being gained by those few technologists, like us, who know how to link. Yeah, we got this one, right? We're search marketers. 
Okay, so the question is, how are we going to do this thing? Social metrics will tell you immediacy. What are we thinking about today, not what are we think about yesterday? Because I tell you, unless the weather blew your house down yesterday, we're not talking about the weather yesterday. We're talking about the weather, you know, what's going to be like tomorrow and you know, what are you doing tonight, that kind of thing. We're talking about immediacy in the future. Okay? And it tells you sentiment. It tells you whether or not people liked it or didn't like it or whatever. Cool. On the other hand, links are not going away. Don't ignore the basics. It is how the web is put together. It's how search bots find pages. It's how humans find pages. They hop from page to page. The link is the bridge. It can't go away. Don't ignore that stuff. Note that social is the very top piece of that. If the basics aren't in, you're going to be in trouble. Email marketing. Don't ignore the power of email marketing. Okay? We send out newsletters without calls to buy. Okay? They contain items of interest to members of our community. We have a top 10 list of what's going on this week and things like that. Um, basically, we provide stuff that people need and want. We make it easy to aggregate information, or we aggregate the information so it's easy for them to absorb it. They link through and they go. It's a little bit like an RSS feed, but it's an email letter. Okay? Very powerful stuff. And we involve in a sharing incentive community. So you have to encourage somebody to share on your site. If you tell people follow me on Facebook, but you don't give me a reason, not happening, right? But if you tell me that the reason is that I can get discounts, well, okay, that's fine. But hopefully you're going to give me a better reason to do so. So think about reasons that you could do with to your community that says there's a good reason to follow you on something, or there's a good reason for them to help build your site. Urban Spoon did it brilliantly. Okay? They asked people to review stuff. Over at our place, we have something called UMOS. We'll talk about that in a minute. Well, actually, no, let's do it right now. UMOS is a place where you can actually post a, um, an article that would be like the SEO mod blog, but it's by people who are parts of our community, as opposed to the folks who are in our company who blog on the main blog. Then we provide thumbs up and down, very much like Facebook, because everybody knows how to use them, right? And if enough thumbs up happen within a short period of time on a particular UMOS blog, it says, hey, the general community is really interested and they think this is really good stuff, we're going to promote it to the main blog. Okay. It is fully edited and it's fully, you know, uh, uh, reviewed and so on, so there's no scanning that goes on there, just so you know. But it really helps to incentivize your community to do so. Now, why do people put stuff in the UMOS blog? It's because if you're an individual search marketer or a company search marketer, right, an agency, right, you want to be somebody who can say, hey, I posted on the industry standard website and they accepted my post. It actually helps you close jobs. And if your stuff should get promoted to the main blog, it really helps you close jobs. And then folks inside the community tell the other community members that it helps them to do that. More community members build more of the site. Okay. Design like an award winner. This one isn't a huge takeaway. It's true, you have to. If you have crappy website design, it just, yeah, it's not going to work, guys. But there's no way around it. There are no secrets around it. It's just hard. Let's take a look at some tactical assaults. Tag fee. Tag fee stands for these words. Transparency, authenticity, generosity, fun, empathy, and exceptional work. It's what we built SEO laws on. Just the other day, somebody sent us tag fee cookies. Another company sent it to us, and one of my staff, Leah, took the photo and sent it to me. And I picked it up, I guess I was in London, en route to here, when that happened. So I didn't get to taste the cookie, but I got to see the photos, and um, here we go. Now, think of tag fee as the fuel that runs our company. Okay? This is that message, that nature of the company. And I've told you a long story about how we built the darn thing. Okay? It is the nature of our company. Now, I know that these banks will put these little cards out and print them up and put them in your pocket and that sort of thing and write you up if you're not carrying them. Okay? But I tell you that the people at SEO Moss hang their reality at the door when they walk in every single day. We hire for tag fee first. Do you know how hard it is to build an engineering team for tag fee first? This does not mean that we're willing to waffle on any of the extraordinary skill sets required to build and maintain Linkscape, which is the flagship tool that powers the SEO MOS tool sets and many other tool sets around the world. Right? Same thing with our marketing team, same thing with admin and so on. But you've got to be tag fee first. If you're not tag fee, you're not coming in. Because we get one person who isn't tag fee, it's going to poison the whole pool. Okay? 
hire for spirit first, and then figure out how many of those left in that pool will meet your criteria in terms of tactical stuff. You can teach tactical stuff, you can't teach tactics. Okay. So, it's the rudder in the water. It's what we do every time we have a question. The question, is it tag fee, happens multiple times a day inside the office. It tells us what we're going to build next. It tells us what we're going to do in terms of marketing and so on. We finally hired ourselves a vice president of marketing. You should be super proud of me, because until then, we used to do things like put ramparts up and then pour hot oil over people who wanted to spend money with us. Right? So this guy's been clearing away the walls and, and rolling out the red carpet and getting rid of the hot oil routine, but that apparently was really good for business. And he's actually making it easier for people to do business with us. Extraordinary stuff. We finally, you know, are doing our own work. Came up with this idea of mastication. A group of people from SEO Mast will get in a car or a plane or whatever and go to a particular town and have a holiday. That's mozzie. That's tag fee. Definitely. So we put out this little kind of contest like they said, okay, we're going on Moscation, we're going to go to four cities around the world, why should we come to your town? Oh boy. We had a really good time. Right? Here's what happens. You guys are search marketers, right? You got this, right? You could promote Bangalore as the place where the Mazars are going to show up next year in a heartbeat. I'll bet there's like 20 of you with brilliant ideas about how you would promote that and make us come to your place. Enticing us with, I don't know, marketing ideas and, and whatever it is, tactics and campaigns and stuff like that. And that's exactly what happened. Groups of search marketers in cities all over the world did exactly that. And while they were busy doing that, hmm, it was a campaign, wasn't it? I guess that worked. More people got to know about the SEO mod brand. More people engaged with it. It doesn't necessarily mean to immediate sales, but it means a greater brand reach. And then we chose four cities. Interestingly enough, the entire world told us to go to Lima, Peru. There are not that many search marketers in Lima, but everybody around the world says, no, you've got to go to Lima, you've got to go to Lima. Why do we have to go there? Well, it's interesting. I mean, there's Machu Picchu is up there and so on. That was interesting enough. That's not what they meant. They said, while you're there, you should go see that thing. Right? So, but you've got to go to Lima. All these search marketers are struggling. It's a very young community. They're just starting out. They need us. They didn't say they need you. They said they need us. So we went to Lima. People from Germany, who are part of the SEO Moss community, showed up in Lima. They came to meet us. Pretty cool. We went to Barcelona, Lima, uh, Sao Paulo, so two of South, uh, South America, actually, and uh, of all places, Salt Lake City in the United States. I don't know, but they won. So they nominated cities. We had some fun. We went to Moscation. Sometimes we have social media plays and we don't even need to. And that's the nature of, I think, what was just being talked about a moment ago, that Kapil said, when social media really works, you don't have to do it yourself. We weren't really doing anything. We had an engineer who was noodling out a problem, so he decided, as he sat around thinking, that he was just going to stick some post-it notes up. He had two of them, reds and blues, or kind of fuchsia and blues, sitting there. And then he found green ones, so now he had three colors. And he just tooled around and he put up something that looked like Space Invaders. Anybody old enough to play Space Invaders? Damn, I lost a lot of productivity with Space Invaders. OK, a few of you are like, oh, I'm like this, yeah. <laughs> gray hairs, right? No hairs. I know, like me. There we go, gray hairs. Yeah, it comes out of the bottom now, right? Anyway, you put up Space Invaders. Very cool. The next day, <coughs> that's across the street. See that guy? What is it? Anybody know? Mario. That's right. Mario Brothers showed up, and other stuff. Okay, just this one showed up first. Okay, game on. The guys who sit over here, these are the designers, actually. This one belongs kind of the window to the engineer sitting over there. But now we've got the design group here. These are the guys who created Roger Mossbot that you've got over here. They went to work. So now they've got this guy and this guy, and they went down the hall, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, and then next day, you know, more and more showed up, and, and so on and so forth. The thing took off. Across the street, all four floors, right, four floors, let's say that three times fast, right, got engaged. There were stickers all over the place. Post-it notes everywhere. We had ours on our side, and it was covered all the way down the building, because it's now we're up the entire fourth floor. Okay. By the way, when we started, um, I was in a room about the size of the stage, maybe a little smaller. So that's where we started. 
and now we're in the fourth floor of the fourth and Pine Zone. So anyway, we had this war going on here now, and just, you know, back and forth. And then those guys got a hold of us. They figured out who we were, and they sent us an email. They said we should get together. So we went out and had drinks with the guys next door, all four floors. We got to know more technologists on Fourth Avenue. Who knew they were all techie companies? Well, one of them wasn't quite a techie company, but it was really close anyway. So we got to know some friends. Meantime, it was spreading. It was going up Pine Street. This is second in time, so you're looking at Pine Street here. It was going up Pine Street. More buildings were showing up with post-it notes. The local newspaper picked it up, and GeekWire picked it up. So now we're in GeekWire about the post-it wars on Pine. In the meantime, it's hopped over to Pike Street. Okay. So that's the next street over. And then on Fourth Avenue, there was an entire building. Let's see if I've got that. Yes, there was an entire building that had the entire first level of Super Mario Brothers. There was not a single piece of it. It was as dark as those windows because it was covered head to head. We didn't even try. Uh, Disney World. Disney World is an example of a really large brand with an extraordinary brand community around it. There are people who are just Disney junkies, right? They love that stuff. It's because they don't really sell entertainment. They're both the happiest place on earth and people buy into it. Okay? We have a lot of fun over at SEO Moz, and it's my illusion, if you will, or my put, that if you don't have a serious amount under the hood in your tech company, having fun with it is probably a little specious. It would just be foolish. But we have some serious game in the technology sector at SEO Moz, right? We're the makers of Linkscape. For those of you who don't know Linkscape, it's a crawl of the World Wide Web. It refreshes every couple of weeks. It's about 50 billion URLs. And just for a sense of, of balance on that, when Cool went live, it was the, kind of the new search engine a couple of years ago, right? They went not live with 9 billion. They didn't make it. But, you know, you get a sense of it. We leverage fun all the time. It's what I'm doing here with chocolate, with stickers, with things like that, and so on. Even when we launched Linkscape, we were trying to explain how we had created what we would think of as exceptional work for us. This was our big BHAG, our big hoary audacious goal. This was the thing that could not be done, right? And people who say that a thing cannot be done are often interrupted by those who are doing it. And at SEO Moz, it's our goal to keep interrupting people. So this was the big thing we did October 6th of 2000, excuse me, October 8th, not the other way around, October 6th of 2008. We had taken a million dollars invested in funding and to the end of 2007, and about 11 months later, we launched Linkscape. So pretty good stuff. Um, we created a cartoon. We created this you know, little thing here that explained why we did this. And it was cute. You can read it later and so on. But it was fun. And then we got a little technical in it, right? a little silly again, and so on. And we got as salesy as we had ever been. Try it now. Whoa. For us, that was an ad. We'd never done it. That was the first time. We still do have a lot of fun. We still do blog every day. And we attempted to raise money in 2010. Actually, we always get approached. We don't raise money. We just wait for somebody else to approach us. And when we had several people approaching us, that's when we went for it. It didn't work out. It didn't meet you know, the things that we were looking for. And this is the deal in 2011. Remember, we talked about that before. It comes with a price. So in terms of building community, and the authenticity of it is that it comes with a price. For example, this was a price. Rand blogged about this, did misadventures again. 24 mil is still a fair sum of money. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen a $24 million check. Right? And it would have been a partial exit for myself and for Rand. And for the balance, it would have grown the company to the next level. So pretty big stuff. We blow it again. Rand blogs about it. and. Just recently, we are replacing our vice president of engineering. She's an amazing woman. It was time for her to move on and to manage an even bigger project. She was hired by a company. We bless it and move on. We wish her well. She was helping us find our replacement vice president of engineering. She had given us a good 60 days notice. All was well, except that her top choice read that and said, you know, you guys didn't get the funding. I don't know. I'm not sure, this and that. Right? So if we could talk around it, we could, you know, give our point of view and why we still thought that SEO models was going to be exciting even though we didn't take the funding. We weren't going to grow quite as quickly and so on and so forth. But we're doubling our income every year. You know, if we're talking about all these good things, that was a price. If he kept quiet about it, the guy wouldn't have known. He probably would have come on board. But that would not have been either transparent or authentic. 
So we talked about it. We lost them. Here's another one. In 2008, this is Jen Lopez, by the way. No kidding. The manager of our community, our community development manager, right, is Jennifer Lopez. I kid you not. So this is Jennifer Sable Lopez. She worked for us since about 2008 to 2009. She worked for a company at that time, um, it was on target jobs out of Denver, Colorado. Um, they offer a salary, and then you can go take medical and other things and so on. And she decided not to. She had a new baby, she had a spouse who was a photographer, he was a real estate photographer, and there was a real estate crash, and it was difficult for him to get work, and so on and so forth. So she decided to pass on the medical. She came to work for us. And I'll tell you, since we didn't have those two nickels to rub together, when I was walking the streets thinking I'm going to make payroll and I'm going to make rent, the first nickels we got went to medical. Because I worked with very young people. That meant that they were invincible. Anybody here under 30? You're still invincible, right? Not today. But you remember being under 30? Right? You were never going to die. Nothing was ever going to happen. Until, of course, you get hit by a bus because you take a bicycle to work and, you know, it's dark in the mornings because we live in the Pacific Northwest. Or somebody gets glioblastoma and the stuff hits the fan. Oh, yeah. She came to work for us. About six months later, she wasn't feeling too well. It turned out that she had colon cancer. You'll forgive me, but that's a disease of old men. She was 32 years old. She had a two-year-old child and a spouse. And she was the primary breadwinner. Thank God she had insurance. Jim is going to be fine. She's back at work after almost a year. Chemotherapy was brutal. It took a toll on her physically and emotionally. And all the people at SEO Moss filled in her role. And she didn't get fired. She didn't get laid off. And her position is still there. And hundreds of people sent her everything from the world to who knows what and that sort of thing along the way. But she had insurance. You pay that price. You pay it every day. If you're the CEO, it's your job to do so. Top 10 tactic tips. Think like a .org. We started as a .org. And we still live that way. Okay? We are definitely a full problem organization. Five minutes to get. So think like a dot org. If you can't think like a dot org because you have a corporate environment, somebody asked this question. Right? They said, what happens if you have a community, if you will, a, a corporate um, spirit there, right, an entity, and you have a single department? Can you create your own community around it? The answer is yes. This is a picture of Steve Jobs looking very pissed off. Right over there. See? 1984. The pirate flag. It's a fairly famous photo. He had been fired as CEO. He knew that the Lisa was a piece of crap. But the other guy went on and built it anyway. So he came back as Skunkworks, as the pirate ship. And he created a culture of your absolute best every time. Nothing else is going to do it. Our way or the highway. We don't have focus groups. We don't ask communities. We don't do any of that stuff. We're not interested. He knew. So community has interesting use in terms of social media and social marketing. You can ask your community extraordinary things. You can ask them what color your car should be painted next year. You should ask them what's wrong with your stuff. People say, what happens if you know, the product sucks? Well, I'll tell you what happens. It tells you what to put into triage. I know what to triage in my stuff by Twitter. It shows up within seconds. It tells me that something's broken. The engineering department stops and they fix the damn thing. Right? But longer term communication tells me what I build next and what just died what nobody's interested in anymore, right? Every product has a bell curve, a life cycle. Most companies don't know when that life cycle is over. Social media will tell you that stuff. But in this case, it was also about creating a community. And that was the spirit and the community of the Apple brand that survived. Out of that tiny little group, he took over the company again. So he knew what he was doing. Being the center of conversation. I was talking to somebody about this at lunch, so somebody's already heard of this, right? Since the blog must be of the highest order, this exceptional work that we talk about, we've created UMOS. That's how we engage. Think of ways that you can engage your community and what they can put in besides a thumb up, a thumb down, or maybe a yeah, that's cool. Transparency and authenticity. As a corporation, I would say try to be known 
for building other people's brands, the brand, the personal brand of the people who work for you. Continuing education, all the tools and toys they need to play at the top of their game. As a CEO or so on, it's Rand's job to build the vision for the company. Right? My job as a business person was to make sure that everybody had all the toys they needed to play at the top of their game and then get out of their way. Watch them walk on water. Work backwards. Follow the money backwards. Avinash Kaushik, anybody know Avinash? He's the right, Google mm -hmm. Analytics guy, right? He's the analytics evangelist okay, for uh, Google. He talks about this Expedia project in which he was helping Expedia, who was a fairly large client of Google's, right, to improve their conversion rates. He got in there and he said, okay, so I'm going to go on holiday, I'm going to think about where I'm going, I'm going to go to this country, maybe that country, yeah, yeah, okay. And you go, and the phone rings, so you start again. Well, I think I'll go to this country, go to that. Okay, and then you do it again, and again, and again. He said, same session. That way I've done the country thing already. Now I can figure out whether I want to go by airplane or whether I want to take the kids or whatever. Each time you go save session, it increased their take more than 17% in three months. As Avinash would say, you would have an orgasm, right? But I don't do it as well as he says it. That's what he's known for. I'll tell you though, have you any idea what kind of money that means for Expedia? Holy cow. Work the money backwards. Find out where people are going and find out what they're doing right. Then make the other ones do it as well. And my last top tip is, tip number one, ask Rand. To become a thought leader, go leverage thought leaders to begin with. Okay? So your SEOs, there's your thought leader. He's not busy, right? He's just running a company and running around the world. He's got a wife and this and that and the next thing. He's got time. What you do is you get to make two questions. And you send it out to him, and to 200 more of the top search marketers in the world, you get maybe a 20% response rate. Cool. You got 20% of the top 100 marketers in the world, right? And they've answered your questions. Create an infographic. People will come to your site, and they'll start knowing that you are the guy who aggregated that kind of information. I brought toys. I have SSB 2011. Gives you 45 days to come play with Mazars. You can get inside. Um, fair warning: it will ask you for a credit card. It will not charge your credit card, and you must cancel within six weeks. If you don't, email me and I'll fix it. But just cancel within six weeks. While you're inside there, right? Check it out. See how the whole thing runs. See what the platforms look like. Check out how the brand looks and how the, the website is created, so on. Also check out whether or not the software can bring you more than 100 bucks a month. If it can't, it's not for you. That's okay. But download all of the guides. Okay? We're known for a lot of education. We continue to do that. We have a lot of free guides. But get in there and get all the pro guides. They'll all be free to you guys. And once you've downloaded them, they're yours. So those of you who don't have a card, come see me. Thank you very much.